Just do more class size, guys. Grass. Anyone want to know what's grabbing? Oh, I thought you said there's no more, as in, like, you hate all of them. He's using everything. everything. Just wolf them down. Don't get it back. Well, that's fine. <laughs> eat it. Eat it. There's a protective case on us for a reason. Oh, yeah. I don't hear enough excitement yet. <laughs> that's better. That's better. So, two types of uh, additional handouts. So, I am so happy and proud of myself. It, it, it took me a much longer time to figure out uh, what will be your um, individual as was say, awesome. rather than actual Could preparation of the yeah. lecture material and, and other stuff. And again, if you uh, dislike them, it's your projects, not, not mine. You are always free to redecide. Just follow the, the, the deadlines. It, it is a suggestion. But I had an ambiguity, like several projects for one subject or one person for several. Well, but now it is uh, almost non ambiguous. I will speak about it a little bit more. And we will start a new chapter in case you do not trust me. <laughs> uh, there is a second opinion. So we will start the subject of the angular momentum. Yeah. Okay. They have the equation that goes all the way across the page, like all its condensed. Which one is it? Uh, the. I remember it had like the linear function. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah, like the three different the spherical harmonics. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. So, what do we have here? <laughs> well, um, I see an error in what I show here by now. So, number 38 on the elements 24 is not a uh, class day. So, I will reshuffle either squeeze or skip some materials. But there are two deadlines that I would like to bring to your attention. Well, maybe it's not important for you, but it's important for me. Um, by the coming Wednesday lab, you need to accept what is on, on this little uh, piece of paper about subject of your research project. So if you want to redecide, um, do it until Wednesday night. So by Wednesday night, you, it is important that you do have your idea what you do and select the potential for modeling. We will do projects for three labs more, but uh, it will be a little late to change the course on the middle of the bridge. So. Um, Keep deciding now. If you're not happy with what I suggest, it's fine. You still have a couple of days to, to, to decide and, and, and discuss. So on the um, Wednesday 22nd, we will finalize potentials. If everything goes smoothly and easy, I will have material to entertain you. But if you don't, I will just circle around tables and help you in your projects. And on the next Wednesday, which is 29th, we will do main part of the research projects. We will, um, independent of what you're doing, all the data, all the results do depend on temperature. Reactions are activated by temperature, charge transfer is activated by temperature, uh, redox reactions measured by uh, electrochemistry, everything. So we will just uh, try it and record data. So we will, basically everyone will collect data that will build a core of the individual research projects. And on the Friday, on the December 1st, I am suggesting, gently, that you summarize everything that will be ready by this time in form of 
uh, written reports. You know how to do written reports, and at uh, class before this day, I will go over standard practices of writing written reports in a little bit more details. But basically, you throw in all uh, figures and tables, write <coughs> captions to them, and then write a little narration that refers to a sequence of figures and, and tables. And then add like a couple of sentence introduction, a couple of sentence conclusions, and then it is done. It's not very hard, but it's the uh, right thing to start planning ahead. So even if results are not ready, you can um, look forward for your project and set up a logical chain of what are expected results, how you connect them to each other. So nothing terrible, but a little thinking ahead is needed. And last time to meet in the lab, <coughs> which will be like middle of the uh, first week of <coughs> December. We will meet in the lab once again just to visualize your results to make them more up, uh, ready for what? Sorry. For your favorite activity, presentations. Uh, okay, so I have learned uh, the assigned exam time time for for this class, which is finals week Wednesday, eight a.m. Which is terrible. <laughs> I think it is much much better if we invest this time into other classes or into healthy sleep. But then. Um, we need to get a confirmation from everyone that last Friday of the third week we can meet not for one hour but for two hours, that we have nothing after. Or we can start one hour earlier. So please inspect your other activities and um, I will request your confirmation when we meet next time. Because even if you do three minutes presentations, one hour is, is not enough. for. Um, unknown material. If you're presenting something that is known before, we can really skip through as we did before, like three minutes. Questions, no questions, go next. Here, if, if, if you'll be really interested in things and you will want to, to ask some questions, and I can probably want to ask any questions. So a, a little bit more time is appreciated. If it is not possible, then we, we may try to meet on, but I'll do anything I can to avoid. Okay? You, you got general training idea. Thank you. So, um, most of you do have, well, any assignment, any project is based on your free free view. I was not uh, designing instead of you. But some of the projects still uh, identify general direction, but do not do not uh, specify actual molecule you want to describe. So if you have doubts in this aspect, contact me independently. No answer. Yes. So um, any any questions? I can, I I'm kind of lost uh, trade of thought. 
so does Austin have to flip a coin or something for his? <laughs> so, class three hierarchies, your projects, projects, here is your class. Introduction is done. So, um, let me point on the uh, models. Um, whoever um, will do interface of P and semiconductor, so here is silicon with uh, P and N doping. So the charge kind of reshuffle between them. And one can, since one can always point out an interface and direction of charge transfer, one can set up a potential and see how things are transferring there. So there's several of the projects that uh, deal with one dimensional charge transfer with a potential either modeled by Gaussian dips as we did in the lab number 10, or it can be borrowed from uh, our initial calculations. Um, can I get stuff? Thank you. And, and this one. So do you have enough chemical education to call this molecule? Huh? Um. If, if you remove this... Uh, it's the one that methane. the dye. Yeah, yeah uh, so I have zero chemical background. I'm <laughs> just <excluded> from <laughs> recording. So 3 and Z, I mean. <clears throat> At least when I, um, I was telling, no, telling this, no one was uh, objecting. Well, I mean, you have that hydroxyl. Oh, I, I'm hiding that. <laughs> <laughs> then you do like six or whatever, four methyl functionalized. You guys get mm -hmm. extensive training in organic. You should learn quite organic. So, this one, how many atoms do you see here? Too many. <laughs> the right answer. All right. But how many types of atoms? How many colors? Three. 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 Do you see cubes? Like if you look, well, I will let it travel. If you focus on the uh, green stuff and look from this aspect, mm -hmm. you see cubical shapes. So green stuff is red. The yellow is iodine, and the silver is either methyl ammonium molecule or uh, cesium uh, alkaline metal. So this is the hope for the energy of the future. This is material. This one, we will replace this one for energy technology. This one is silicon. This is uh, wet Hawaii perovskite. And uh, if you, I don't know if you have class, like literature for chemistry. If you don't, I should come to the departmental meeting to, to have one. Uh, but um, there is a like exponential race because it is really promising. And there is um, <coughs> three years ago, there were 10 papers, then like 1,000, then 10,000. So it, it's really growing. So it's really a hot topic. And uh, when irradiated by light, it creates electron calls for electricity. And one can pull electron with either conjugated polymers or titanium dioxide. And for to pull off the holes, this is one of the examples of, of the molecules. So you connect them. Well, maybe chemically it's not the right thing, but something like this. You connect them and look for charge transfer between them, right? <coughs> one, one of the projects. And then you see, look how it depends on whether there is a connection or no connection, maybe it's just busy so, and you change the temperature and it's cold. Another aspect when looking at this is to neglect the details of um, positions of atoms and Cartesian coordinates and set up that, okay, we have two states, one, when charge is homogeneously spread and one state when the charge is transferred. But then when charge is transferred, the geometry is corrugated. When we return it back to neutral, it relaxes back. 
and we can identify a coordinate that will correspond to this little change of geometry with an x-axis and put two potential surfaces. One, how the energy depends on position for neutral, another for charge transfer. So something really cool to investigate. So let it travel. Um, can I get this little soccer ball? So many of you did select something related to combustion and catalyst, which is a good choice and very related, for example, to chemical education if you, and, and to general, if, if you're really chemical chemist. Not physical chemist, but chemical chemist. So what is catalysis? Um, you may design catalytic or combustion reactions based on your own uh, scientific intuition, but if you need a little input, I can suggest an example. Well, several examples, but this one is simple. So, If I play with this little toys, is it visible enough from this distance? So, water. Proton, hydroxyl. Two protons. I'm not going to, to show focus focus. I'm just demonstrating. <laughs> I'm not going like yeah. no problem. <laughs> now, if we need if we need energy, we need to burn something. So if we combine these two protons into molecular hydrogen, it would be really cool. You can store it in the tank and burn anywhere. But do protons like to combine together? How can we convince them to do so? So they have too much positive charge, you need to communicate a negative charge, mm -hmm. right? So one of the opportunities is to make a metal electrode, charge it negatively, and then from the solution, this protons will like, absorb, because everything sticks to the metal, especially if it is charged. And then if my cluster is falling, and then if there is a excess of the negative charge on the cluster, it reduces these protons, they become neutral, and after that, it is energetically very, very favorable for them to form molecular hydrogen, and then absorption energy also changes, and then molecular hydrogen desorbs. So we can set up reaction coordinate for like distance of these protons from the surface, and maybe secondary coordinate as the distances from hydrogen to each other. And maybe the third one is amount of charge on the cluster. But there is a way to project it on one line and, and simulate. So, <clears throat> I think it was one of the choices. So, um, it doesn't, it, nothing is mandatory, it's your free wheels, but I'm just showing the four opportunities. Please keep playing if you like. Ah. Again, do not hesitate to um, send emails, request something. So if you're not happy, you can find something that will, a project that will make you happy for sure. Questions on the projects right now? Okay. It looks like there is. There are no magic questions. So this mostly deals with what you will do in a week and a half from now. Upon everyone sets up model and coordinate, we will just play with the response of a model to elevated temperatures, where there, uh, there will be some activation, overcoming the activation barrier, and how to put it in a quantitative way. So there will be a way to characterize yield of reaction, 
and rate of reaction, and we will look how the things depend on the temperature. So it will be more or less centralized motif for each product. Who we are and what are we doing, and why we are doing. So, I would be happy with doing projects only, but I think it is uh, sort of my duty to keep mumbling something about general material, and it may help you in your um, big life, in your future career, whatever educational, industrial, research, and more practically and cynically, it should help you in your future classes. As I've learned uh, last time we met, some of you will take uh, inorganic after this class. And um, what is the main interest of inorganic chemistry? Low balance. Mm -hmm. So everything except hydrogen and carbon. Metals. Mm -hmm. Which orbitals do metal ones? The yes. So um, please give me a sign if you never heard of d orbitals. I, please give me a sign if you ever heard of d orbitals. <sighs> Good. <laughs> but then you you will not you will not hear anything new. So the subject that is worth of cup month or cup of months would be um, its angular momentum, and it is integral part of physical chemistry, any chemistry related to metals, any quantum theory, because there are rotations. Rotations, not like a rotation project to join another group, but rotations changing angle in space. So what does rotate in science or in chemistry? Huh? What, did you say? what does rotate in chemistry? Bonds sometimes. Bonds rotate. Okay. More again examples. I mean, don't we assign electron spins? So hmm? electron spins. So anyway, is not rotating. Okay. So. Electron spinning around itself? <laughs> well, no, I mean, uh, but nucleus is. Around that. Yeah. I mean. Yes, yeah. yes, 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 I'm not objecting. I'm just. Uh, I can't <laughs> reproduce the joke, but one of my like old friends was uh, exposed to a military surgeon who was telling, like, you guys are doing science, I don't care what is rotating. Electron about atom or atom about electron, but something is rotating. <laughs> <laughs> so, electrons rotating about nuclei. Good. What else? Well, any molecule can rotate. Well, especially it is molecule in solvent or in, in, in gas. In gas phase. And you know, there is a <coughs> rotational spectroscopy. Mm -hmm. um, basically, if you go over all ranges of uh, electromagnetic waves in logarithmic scales, there are different ranges of electromagnetic uh, frequency or wavelengths, and they would correspond to signals to absorption or emission of um, electromagnetic uh, waves from material, but from different sort, different kind of degrees of freedom. So if it is X-ray, this will be from very deep atomic level to very high atomic levels. If it is uh, UV visible, it will be uh, transitions between uh, frontier orbitals, like Homo Homo in uh, semiconductors. If it is infrared, it will be uh, oscillations of bands. And if it is um, microwave, patients, molecules in gas phase, 
And uh, for lower frequency, like radio frequency, there is uh, EPR and NMR, right? You didn't quote me line. Good. I wasn't. What else can we take? It's enough. We, we don't need more. But um, when the electron rotates about nuclei, it affects the atomic orbitals. Even if you do not have any chemistry, no chemicals, just atomic spectroscopy, then it, it determines the shapes of atomic orbitals in spectroscopy of isolated atoms and ions. But then, if you take an L element, atom of a heavy metal, either surrounded by ligands for metal organic complexes as you do in, in organic chemistry, then same principles of the building these D orbitals will affect all chemical properties and all spectral properties. And another example, see these fluorescent lights? Do you know how they are built up? If it would be a gas, yes. Since it's a gas, it would be. Which, which gas? An inert gas, like some. You don't want to break uh, it. Okay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you usually have to have someone to do it for you. So you have uh, electrodes, you have uh, mercury gas, and then. Uh, upon applied voltage, it uh, emits in which range? Invisible. Right? If you um, are upset to have too much of white color in, in, in the skin in the middle of the winter, there is a tan. Uh, saloon where you can get a little suntan, which uh, you have this mercury lamp without any coverage from the tube. And then you get exposure to UV light and get a little suntan. But they meet white, white, which is supposedly pleasant for the eyes. <laughs> white. What happens in, in the fluorescent lamps? Oh, by the way, fluorescent lamps, it's oh, self-declaring. What is, what is happening? You're yeah, adding fluorescent. energy to your electrical current. No. So <clears throat> here, here is your tube. You, uh, uh, through the voltage difference, yeah. mercury vapors emit UV mm -hmm. photons. But our eyes would not see UV photons. What happens next? What is uh, deposited on the surface? Why, if you switch it off, I will not do an experiment, otherwise you will not see me, I will not see you. They appear like whitish. They're not transparent if it will be like naked glass with vapors. So what is deposited in the, in the, on the inner layer? A fluorescent film. Good. Something that just absorbs it, and when it absorbs, it emits. Uh, yes, yes. So there, there is a, a material that would absorb uh, UV. Then there will be um, conversion to the present levels in the visible range, and then it emits in, in a visible, right? <coughs> Typically. These levels that uh, give the emission are metals, either D or F uh, uh, orbitals that contribute to, to this emission. Convincing enough to study rotations? So we study rotations because we need, uh, well, actually it would be nice to avoid fluorescent lamps. Now it is more popular to have the light emitting diets. We'll cover them as well. 
it's not more complicated than, than this stuff, right? You have separated charge, but then they want to recombine and they need bytes. <laughs> no. <laughs> what? I sent the wrong file. Let's try it again. Oh, okay, good. Thank you. Redo? <laughs> About redo. I will tell I can't resist to tell a joke. It is not related to this class, but it, it will be related to the next class in the row to combinational chemistry, which some of you may take, some of you will miss, and then you miss the joke, which is appropriate for the, for the next class. So in combinational chemistry, some procedures are repeated uh, self-consistently. Again and again, you repeat the same procedure until you get solution of an equation. So the answer, get as initial condition, then you redo. And to illustrate, um, I have reserved joke. Um, programmer works in a company, works, 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 suddenly doesn't appear anymore and he is a valuable worker. Doesn't appear first day, second, third, and then the company starts disturbing and send a team to check what is going on. They find him in a tub, still alive, but bluish, with shaking hands, keeping the shampoo and looking at it. And then they, what is, what, what is hot and he's showing and not able to speak. And they read, apply to head, rinse, repeat. <laughs> 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 so it's about uh, redo. <laughs> ah, I'm so lucky, there is no time to write anything, I will just show uh, primary things. So, Rotations. If it is a free rotating gas molecule, well, we, we know in quantum theory we, we always want to the energy operator, the Hamiltonian. But if it is a gas, like maybe H2 molecule, and it rotates, it rotates in vacuum at different angles, does the energy depend on the angle? Does the potential energy depend on the angle? Is there a potential energy in the vacuum? No. So no potential energy, so the, the whole Hamiltonian will, will be composed only of the kinetic energy. Kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is what? Momentum squared over two masses, or velocity squared times mass divided energy. So We can play a trick and here divide and multiply this kinetic energy by distance squared. Like if it is H2, you saw it. I, I, do, not do, I, do, not, I do not need to show you here. Distance between two atoms. If you put this distance into nominator and denominator, nothing changes, right? Still energy. But this is a favorable, preferred form of the uh, kinetic energy for rotating stuff. Seven minutes, excellent. So the operator of momentum is the only equation that I can memorize. Maybe you have memorized more things from, from the course. And now our goal is to convert to merge together these uh, things, the kinetic energy momentum operator, in such form, in such shape, that it will be more convenient for rotational motion. Why? Because rotation is curving linear. It doesn't move on a straight line. So maybe operators, you can do everything in the old fashion. You can do like three-dimensional uh, um, momentum for x, y, and z, put them squared, and that's fine, but it will be a lot of unnecessary labor. There is a way to find a convenient system of coordinate where all procedures related to description of rotation will be 
relatively simple. So either two atoms or electrons around the atom are rotating. There is, and even if the distance can change, we always can specify the distance between these two rotating objects. Right? So when rotation is going on, we can parameterize it in different ways. We can either put uh, Cartesian coordinates of this things that are rotating, or we can um, record the angle compared to the initial orientation, or we can follow the arc length. So if it is, in the simplest case, if the rotation, if distance is not changing, it is homogeneous circular rotation, it will just draw a circle, and then instead of angle, we can follow the arc length, right? Which is radius times angle if angle is in, in radius. Good. Now, here, radius times angle. So the increment of this arc length is proportional to increment of the, of the angle. Okay. And then, it's not a big discovery, but the, since arc length and angle are connected as a radius, you can either divide one of them or upside down, so it will be one over r. Okay. There will be a trick. There will be a trick. So let me disclose it ahead of time. In all our lives before, in the class. I don't know what, what you're doing outside of the class. We were given these differential operators related to Cartesian coordinates. In the Euclidean space where angle between uh, independent variables is 90 degrees, right? It's time to stop, Jim. <laughs> so the differential operators for rotation will be cast as a function as differential operators related to angles. And rotating about one angle, another angle, instead of uh, Cartesian projections. And we are contributing to, to doing this, this thing right now. So a little mathematical experiment. Ah, three minutes more. So if we inspect how the wave function, and we can define wave function of any arguments, you respond to derivative over this arc length. We can apply a chain rule, right? And uh, make derivative over uh, related to change of distance between these rotating objects and, and the angle. For changing distance, it's cool, but not for now. We can assume that the distance is constant. And this comes uh, develops a term rigid rotor. Rigid means like distance is not changing. So even if it is rigid, there is uh, there are a lot of things to, to study, and it is already uh, impressive. So second thing. So there is a derivative of angle over arc length, and there is a derivative of the wave function over angle, right? But derivative of the angle over arc length for constant distance between rotating objects is one over, over distance. And even if it is not constant, one over distance. So, derivative over arc length, and arc length is still distance in some sense, but it is one of r derivative over the angle. Okay? Good. Two minutes? No, one minute. Now, 
our old body, not oil, old body uh, momentum, linear momentum. So, what if we set up, if you want to um, recall a concept of angular momentum, which is uh, cross product of distance times momentum, and cast it and convert it into uh, differential orbitals that are applicable to quantum theory. So if if you are looking only on motion in x y plane, then momentum will be always in this plane, uh, distance in, in plane. So the angular momentum will be projected up, upside down, and instead of cross product, will be r times p. And instead of uh, p, we will be able to replace this expression as derivative over angle. Okay, I think it is enough for today. So the main thing to characterize rotation is derivative over angle. Which, will, which is exactly corresponds to angular momentum projection to z-direction. Enough, enough. Thanks for coming, and see you Wednesday. Do we have live on Wednesday? Are we planning, huh? on, are we planning on meeting, meeting Wednesday night? No. I do plan on okay. meeting Wednesday night. I will, if no one comes, I will meet with myself. <laughs> Thank you.